Hello and welcome to CareStream's Imaging Innovation on the Move webinar. I am Melody Warner, CareStream's Communications Manager and today's moderator. Before I turn you over to our experts, I just want to highlight a few features within Zoom that may better your experience. At the top of the screen, you can select some video options to change it to side by side so you can see the presentation on one side and the videos right next to them. Or if you prefer the floating video option, you can change how many cameras you see or move it about your screen on the video panel itself. We have a lot of time at the end for questions and answers. The questions can be submitted at any time throughout the presentation. To submit a question, you can just click the QA option at the bottom of your screen. You can also interact with our experts throughout the presentation through the chat feature. And with that, I will turn you over to Nikhil Goel, CareStream's Country Manager for India and the Indian subcontinent. Thanks, Melody. Thanks. Thanks for your first communication. And I welcome all the all our esteemed guests to the CareStream webinar. Uh, in the audience, I can see that we have almost more than 200 folks who have already joined us, and I can see a lot of folks joining every minute as we talk. So let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you. A lot of people from the medical fraternity, radiologists, radiographers. I can see a lot of students, uh, people from outside of India, from the India cluster, a uh, lot of our channel partners, uh, and obviously the our extended K stream family. Uh, welcome to all of you this evening for our first endeavor in India with respect to imaging innovation on the move. Uh, before we move to our uh, guest for the day, uh, Bill Elgi, I would uh, like to introduce to all of you our moderator as well, my co-host, Emma, if you can just raise your hand for everyone to see. Um, so Emma hi, is girl. our case. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Emma Perrin is our case stream clinical marketing manager for Asia Pacific region and based out of Singapore. She has over 11 years of experience in clinical and commercial radiology. She's done her studies, master degree in research from St. Joe's University in London, as well as Bachelor of Science in Diagnostic radiography from University of Liverpool and has worked as a diagnostic radiographer in both London and Singapore Hospital uh, prior to joining us in case stream in 2017. So welcome Emma uh, to the webinar. Uh, and over to our guest uh, for the day. Bill, I understand it's early morning for you. Thanks, thanks for joining us early in the day. So Bill Elgi with us today is uh, a certified radiology administrator and the director of imaging services all the way at Columbus Regional Hospital. Uh, he's been in radiology administrator, administration for more than 20 years. He's the past president of the Association for Medical Imaging Management, which is a national organization in the United States. Uh, he's received the HRA fellow designation, which is uh, given to HRA members who make significant contributions to the field of medical imaging industry uh, and its profession association. Uh, beside his hectic uh, work life, uh, Bill is uh, an 80s rock and roll fan and does his own podcast. I'm sure a lot of audience from here would like to know about that as well, Bill. Uh, and you know, before I go to the format of what the conversation is all about, imaging innovation on the move, the use of mobile technology, especially in times today of COVID, um, you know, I'd like to really understand, Bill, how's been the recent times for you? you know, a lot of things, uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of learning, I presume, during the current COVID period. So how's been it for you? Uh, how's been uh, this past uh, few months for you uh, in your practice, Bill? It has been, uh, thank you very much, Nikhil. Uh, and it's very nice to meet you and thank you all for your time today. Um, it's been um, pretty wild, to be honest with you. Um, you know, uh, we started the year as a normal year and three months in, it flipped to something that none of us would have ever expected. And none of, and we're all still trying to figure out how to manage it. Um, we learn something new every day, um, and it's been challenging. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting though. <clears throat> with the challenges comes a little bit of, um, you know, knowledge that you learn, and um, a little bit of fun of being able to do something a little bit different and outside of your normal day-to-day -day mundane stuff. Um, that doesn't mean it was always pleasant. <laughs> it's been pretty challenging. So there you go. Yeah. I understand that. So over to you, Bill, you know, if you can take us through your uh, clinical practice, your institution, and, and obviously uh, the use of mobile imaging in your clinical practice. 
Sure. So um, I'm the radiology director here at Columbus Regional Hospital, and on the screen you can see a, a beautiful picture of our building. Um, we are one of the top 50 cardio, cardiovascular hospitals in the country. Um, that was named earlier in the year. Um, we're a 250-bed facility located just slightly south of Indianapolis. Um, and for those of you that don't know, you may be more familiar with Chicago. Um, and we're about uh, three hours south of Chicago. So that might give you a little bit more of a perspective. Um, we do approximately 80,000 imaging procedures a year. Um, a portion of those are obviously portables, not all of them. Um, and um, we do outpatient imaging, we do about 16,000 procedures a year in an outpatient imaging clinic that we have that's in a separate building from CRH here. Um, we uh, have had portable imaging as long as I can remember. Um, even back when I was in x-ray school, we had portable imaging. So um, it's, it's a staple in our everyday lives here. Um, we use it consistently. Um, and it's a great way to take our services to the patient versus um, you know, having to bring patients to us whenever it's, they're at a time and a situation in their lives where moving them around is a bad thing. So um, especially patients on vents, those kinds of things, people in the OR. So we use our portable imaging for quite a few different practices. And in light of the COVID situation, it has helped us out tremendously. So in, uh, through the COVID situation, um, most of our outpatients, um, we actually stopped seeing outpatients for a period of time um, because of you know trying to stop the spread, slow the spread. We did stop having outpatients. Um, we did do some outpatients at our outpatient imaging center, um, but our ER basically turned into a triage uh, for COVID. Um, it, we had very, very few people come in through the emergency room that were not COVID related. Um, and a little interesting thing, and I don't know if there, you are experiencing there, this in India, but um, all of our patients that were like cardiac patients that would come in, we would do five to six, seven, eight casts a day. Um, they just stopped coming. And it was very, very bizarre that our practice changed so much that um, those patients that have that need just quit coming. And I think they just were scared. Um, a lot of fear in the United States about COVID. Um, so um, our ER basically turned into a triage unit. So which having our revolution and having a portable made a huge impact in that. Um, that gave us the ability to keep patients in the ER and not have them have to come down the hallways, be exposed, you know, exposed to uh, other patients um, and other people. Um, so how we use the portable here, um, especially in the ER, is um, we would have two technologists that would go to the ER. Um, we would have a what we would call a clean technologist and what we would call a dirty technologist. Um, and they would go and um, perform the portables in the patient's rooms. Um, that allowed us to, the other thing it allowed us to do was really you can get, um, with the Revolution Portable, you can see the images right on the screen. Um, and that allows us to know if the image quality is good right then and we don't have to repeat things and, and it makes for a much shorter time frame for our patients. Um, it also allows the physicians to look at the images immediately um, before they even get sent to our PAC systems. And our PACs is our you know, picture archive communication system, which um, CareStream is very familiar with as well. <laughs> um, so we've used that portable in, in many different ways. Um, we also um, you know, really, really have to focus on, on infection control. That is a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, and especially in the ER. Um, so we would place, although the CareStream port, uh, plates um, and imaging surfaces are all, you know, waterproof and fluid proof, um, we put those in a plastic bag um, before we would place those behind the patient. And that was really for the patient's protection to make them feel more comfortable that they were being protected from any other patients that we might have done. Um, and also to give us a chance to maybe, you know, get that plate cleaner a little bit quicker before we move, could move on to the next patient. The other thing that would happen is um, we would have, like I said a while ago, uh, previously, there's a, we had a clean tech and a dirty tech, um, and that would allow us to um, have somebody manipulating the controls that was clean so that whenever we needed to clean the system, um, we could turn that around a little bit quicker um, and, give, and move on to our next patient. Um, we would always clean the system with what we call Santa Claus, which was our uh, approved um, material to clean with, and we would let the 
uh, equipment sit between 15 to 20 minutes. That was the dry time that was that was uh, given to us by the manufacturer. And um, then we would move on to the next patient. So every time we did a portable, even if there were seven or eight of them that were lined up, we would have to clean the portable, bring it over, let it sit for 15 minutes and take it back. So we didn't really go from room to room to room with the same portable without cleaning it. That didn't really, <laughs> that wouldn't go very well and wouldn't really be a very uh, um, safe environment, I think, for our patients or our staff. So that's something that we really took great care and pride in. Um, we use bedside imaging for, um, for our portable, I mean, I'm sorry, we use bedside imaging in our institution in many, many different ways. Um, we have many patients, many doctors that want portables on patients before they come in in the morning so that they can view them and determine what their plan of care is going to be. Um, the bedside um, revolution allows us to take the image, take the image again to the patient. Um, we can get those images at the docs up there. They can look at them again, um, and then we can bring those back down and then send them to them via the packs. The other thing it allows us to do and that we've used many, many times is line placement. So if the docs have placed the line in the ICU or in the OR, we can use a line placement software that we're gonna talk about here, I think in a little bit, um, to be able to show that the line is in place and that helps move the case along a little faster and reduces the OR time and the time the doc has to be scrubbed in and not performing other tasks that he really needs to plot, he really needs to be doing. So we talked a little bit about infection control for the um, portable, and we'll talk a little bit about infection control for our, pay, for our staff. That's very, very important. Um, so we use what was called uh, PPE here in the States. I'm not sure, I'm sure that's probably something similar there. Um, and we used a couple of different versions. Um, if the patient was really being tested and, and suspected for COVID, we would use what's called a PAPR. And that's a, a protective, uh, personal protective gear. Um, it's a hood that we would put on, an infection control gown, gloves, masks, um, even under the hood. Um, and that hood had a ventilation system. And so um, we would put that on in each patient for each patient. Um, we would have two people that would, we would have a donor who would help you put it on and we'd have a doffer who would help take you off. So you take it off. So you wouldn't end up contaminating yourself <laughs> or the portable or the people around you, which is very good. Um, and we'd, we'd use those and we still use them today. If we have a patient come in um, that is suspected, we do use the PAPRs. Um, but since we have that number has diminished considerably for us, thank the Lord, um, we have moved to um, using an N95 mask, goggles, um, and um, infection, you know, just regular gowns and gloves. So that's changed a little bit for us. But um, again, same thing with cleaning the portable. The portable had to be cleaned between each patient. We wanted to keep the, the uh, plates in a bag um, and make sure that that appeared to the patient. And we would tell the patient that it's been cleaned. We wanted them to make sure that they felt reassured that we were not spreading the disease um, by doing, you know, them being the next patient. That was something I think very, patients were very fearful. Um, it's very interesting of that too. And I, I thought about this the other day. Um, I think the hospital probably is the safest place a patient or anybody else could be during this time. Um, we have cleaned things more than we've ever cleaned before. We, we have focused on on infection control more than we've ever focused on it before. Not that we didn't before because we absolutely did, but it's, it's highly evident. Um, and that fear was, um, you know, an unnecessary fear. And I, and I understand why they feared that, but, but I truly believe um, at least our facility was the safest it's ever been from infection. Um, but, and I'm sure that you guys are, are, are doing the same thing over there. It's, you've got to make sure that you win the confidence of your patient. That's the most important thing. So. Um, you know, the great part, and I talked about this a little bit already, is, you know, we, we take the great part about a, a portable and the Revolution portable specifically um, is, you know, you can take it to the patient. We can take it to the ER, we can take it to the OR, the emergency room, um, we can take it up on the floors to ICU. Um, we've used it in some of our x-ray rooms sometimes. We've had an x-ray room that went down and it kind of made sense to roll it in there and, and use that as a room. Um, you just have a lot of flexibility. Um, and when you have a surge, you have an extra room that maybe you didn't have um, available to you. And it, it, it just really uh, strengthen, strengthens and broadens your depth of imaging services that you can offer to your patients.
Okay, thanks, Phil. Really sure. interesting to hear how the hospitals are adapting and coping in the current pandemic. I just had a quick question for you. You mentioned that the revolution took 15 minutes roughly in between patients um, from bedside to bedside. How did you find that in the x-ray rooms? If you had a, a COVID positive patient, did you have to have a certain amount of time before you brought the next patient into the room? Yes, we did. And actually it was different based on the room because the air handling systems, um, you know, the dry time and infection control time is basically around air turnaround. So um, if the air doesn't turn over fast enough, that lengthens the amount of time that you have to wait. So in the hallways, the air turns over a little bit quicker than it does in the in individual exam rooms. So the care, the care stream portable was really cleaned and used in the outside the rooms in the hallways, and that kind of helped us a little bit. Um, plus, you were in and out. It wasn't, you didn't have a patient in there that was in there for a long time, and that, that, that also um, made a big difference in that clean time. Yeah, yeah, really good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we've heard Bill talk about mobile imaging in practice. So now let's take a quick look at the DRX Revolution features. The DRX Revolution was the industry's first collapsible column system. It allows for radiographers to navigate safely down corridors and around corners. The motorized drive and battery operated exposure makes it easy to maneuver the system from one place to another, as well as around the patient's bedside. We like to think of the DRX Revolution as an x-ray room on wheels, bringing the highest image quality to the sickest patients. It offers enhanced security with Windows 10 to secure patient data, help protect against malicious cyber attacks, and reduces the cost associated with recovery. Our image view software has passed stringent Department of Defense cybersecurity requirements, and these DOD guidelines are now the default configuration for all of our customers. The wireless DRX Plus detectors provide instant access to images, and with the X-Factor detector platform, they work across all our DRX equipment, helping your facility stay within their budget. Advanced enclosure design of the detectors offers a total protection against ingress of water to IEC level seven. So that's also something that Bill would just talk about how important it is, even though they still use the bag for infection control. Um, without the bag, it still um, protects against water. And you'll see dual work zones with user-friendly interfaces on both the tube head and the cart. These allow radiographers to adjust exposures and preview images at the patient's bedside. And as we look more closely at the cart itself, you'll see these flush mounted displays provide a smooth surface area for easy disinfecting, helping to improve infection control, which is so important in the current situation. The detector bins transfer all three size detectors, as well as two detector batteries and optional in-bin charging. And if you need to change the battery on the go, there's a battery hot swap capability for a quick battery change without a reboot. And for added security, there is an optional lock, so it reduces the chances of those detectors running away. One fully charged battery allows for motorized driving for 2.4 kilometers and taking 120 battery operated exposures. And with our high frequency generator, you'll benefit from the following advantages. High frequency generators increase pulses Increased frequency of pulses, allowing a near constant flow of voltage to the tube. This helps to reduce patient exposure time and minimize patient artifacts. The digital operator console enables the operator to select a pre-configured exposure based on patient size. This minimizes incorrect settings and improves productivity. See improved efficiency with more penetration power, dose reduction and better reproducibility. Now let's look at the advanced applications. Companion images are created using various processing algorithms. These can be processed automatically or on demand. In this case, to enhance tube and line visualization while simultaneously suppressing noise. You can see clearly the placements of lines on the image, even for images at low exposure or for larger patients. And I'd be interested to hear Bill's perspective on this from a real life situation. Bill, I know you mentioned mobile imaging to check line placement at the patient's bedside, but do the radiographers um, use this software to aid diagnosis? 
Yes, definitely. Um, especially when you're in the ICU um, and they have a patient that they've just placed a line and they need to make sure that it's in the right place. Um, also, they use this sometimes for ET tube placement, you know, for patients that have been intubated to make sure that the um, tube is not passed where it needs to be in the chest. Um, so, yeah, it is used very pretty regularly. Yep. Great. Thank you. And as you can see from this image, the pneumothorax visualization software accentuates the appearance of free air in the chest cavity. It helps delineation of the lung edge that is displaced from the chest wall by the air contained between the visceral and parietal pleura. And here's a great feature. Smart Grid gives you a virtual grid that improves contrast and reduces the appearance of scatter in an image. As you can see from the image at the lower MAS using Smart Grid, the image quality is comparable to images acquired with an anti-scatter grid. As Bill mentioned earlier, one advantage of mobile imaging is patient comfort. Smart Grid eliminates the heavy physical grid that is often difficult to position behind the patient, and this reduces discomfort to the patient. Now, this is especially important at 3 a.m. when you have to wait your patient for their x-ray. You want positioning to be as easy as possible. And pediatric software sets the appropriate acquisition protocols across a wide range of sizes, from the smallest neonate to the largest adolescents. This software ensures the correct technique is being used and delivers consistent imaging to the most dose-sensitive patients. This, along with the cesium iodide detector, helps to produce the best possible images at the lowest possible dose. And as you can see, it comes in a whole range of pediatric friendly designs. Thank you for listening, and I will pass you back to Melody. Thank you uh, to our experts. Our first question today is, how do you select a good mobile DR? What are the main criteria to look for? That's probably aimed at me. And what I do is I call my rep, Rob Puma from CareStream and say, hey, send me a new portable. <laughs> and I, I know it's kind of tongue in cheek, but honestly, we purchased one about three years ago and I'm um, just and absolutely love it. But I'll, I'll tell you the reason why we purchased the CareStream portable over the other brands and the other, um, you know, companies. Um, we really looked at, mo at mobility. Um, we've had portables for years, like I said, um, and mobility is a very, very important aspect of that, how it travels, braking system, um, battery life. Um, we have staff here that are relatively height challenged. I was going to say short, but I was afraid I'd offend somebody. So we'll say height challenged. Um, and that te the telescoping, um, uh, our, um, the telescoping tube is, makes a huge impact. Um, the staff love that. I love the, the ability to be able to see around it and, and provide safe, um, you know, travel when they are moving around. Um, image quality is of, mo of most important. We just talked about that um, with dose. Uh, the cesium plate um, reduces dose and gives us the ability to have um, great image quality. Um, and then the different functions, you know, the line software. Um, there's a QA function as well to track QA um, as well on the, um, on the portable. Um, and then uh, security. We uh, have our staff tag in and out with their ID tags so we can track the staff. It keeps them from having to log in manually and we can track QA measures that way. And then lastly, it's price. And we all have to agree that price becomes part of the issue. Um, and we've always found that CareStream is, 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 has done very well for us. So um, it's been a great relationship. So I would definitely uh, purchase another one. Thank you, Bill. The next question is, is there a trauma mode in mobile DR which allows for faster capture of images without demographic or patient details? I think I can answer that one. Yes, there is a trauma application and it can be pre-programmed by the operator to include frequent protocols, e.g. a trauma series, a chest x-ray. This means that the operator can select the required protocol fast without having to input the patient details. Now, once they've taken those x-rays, they can then link those x-rays to the patient details once they have them. Thank you. Bill, do you know if they use the trauma imaging um, application? Yeah, they, they do. And if they do have time, they will at least put what they believe is the patient's name in there or they'll put like a John Doe name in there until they get the information and they can move forward. So yeah, either way. Yep. 
next question. What is the easiest and most affordable way of disinfecting the mobile radiography system? Well, what we've done here is we use what we call Santa Claus. Those are the approved um, divide, the, the approved uh, chemical, and they're just wipes. They come in a container, um, and we just wipe down the entire portable, um, and we um, let it sit and dry for the amount of time that the Sandy wipes need to need to wait, and then what's been re what's been recommended by CareStream. Thank you. How to, excuse me, how would you handle CR mobile radiography systems for a COVID patient by controlling the infection to other patients? Well, so what, how, what we did was we made, we cleaned the portable between each and every patient. So um, we wanted to make sure that there was no cross contamination, um, even in the ICU when we would go up there and do three patients at a time, we would go up there and between each patient, we would clean the portable. Um, infection control is, is of utmost importance. Um, you really don't want to um, take anything into, from one patient room to another. Um, and you never know, at least from a technologist perspective, we don't know where that person is in their COVID positive um, recovery. Are they on day one or are they in day seven? Um, we don't know that I don't know personally that information. So um, we treat every patient the same. If they have it, they have it, and we clean the portable and make sure that the next patient gets the cleanest portable they, as the one pre prior to them. Thank you. What are the detector options available in India with the system? The let me direct this to Edwin Pinto, who's our business head for this portfolio. Edwin, would you want to take this? Oh yeah, Nikhil. So from the detector options, we have both the GOS and the CSI detectors. While when we look at the sizes, we have the normal retrofit, which is the 14 by 17 size, which is available both in the GOS and the CSI. We also have the larger format just to ensure that the entire image is captured. So we have the 17 by 17 detector. And very soon we will be launching the 25 by 30 C detector. So we have the, all these three options available. Okay. Thank you. The next question is. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Can you talk through the dose point of view specifically for pediatric patients with the DRX revolution? Yep, so I can, I can take that one. So we do have um, pediatric software, so it ensures that the appropriate protocols um, across a wide range of sizes. So it always ensures that you're giving the correct exposure based on your patient size. The cesium iodide detector, which what Edwin mentioned um, is one of the options for the detectors, help to produce really good images at the lowest possible dose. Emma, can I add to that real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, one of the things that's, that's great about the portable is we have a care stream uh, digital plate in one of our x-ray rooms that we've used as a um, you know, it's an adjunct. It was a D, it was a regular analog room. We updated it to DR to direct or to digital. Um, so we are able to do the exactly the same things in, in on the portable that we can do in that space in the room by setting protocols to be different things to your point. Um, it really isn't, uh, it, it really allows a huge amount of flexibility. It's, it is, it is truly taking an x-ray room on wheels. Um, and that's definitely what we have found um, with our experience with the portable. Thank you both. Can you talk through the regular maintenance requirements for the DRX revolution? Uh, Edwin, would you like to take that? The regular maintenance I think yeah, basically when we look 
I think basically when we look at it, this is a pretty sturdy system that is available right now. So the regular maintenance is taken care by our service team where we have the regular preventive maintenance, but more from the user side, it's more of regular charging of the, of the system, as well as generally the batteries provided are two units per system. So we need to regularly charge each of the batteries to ensure that the batteries are available, that the charge is available to take the images as and when required. And there's also a daily dark calibration on the detectors that can be performed, which I'm sure Bill has some input on as well. Yeah, our staff do that every day. So they all of our detectors get what's called a daily dark, like she said. It's a, it's basically kind of a reset for the for the for the detector. Um, and does a QA process so that we can find if there's been any issues, um, if there's any drops or anything like that. I mean, um, those come out during that daily drop as well. Thank you. How many exposures can be taken with one battery charge? With uh, one battery again? charge? Yeah. yeah. With one right. battery charge, typically when we look at it, we can do about 140 exposures. So what is normally done is we provide two batteries with it. So once you do the 140 exposures, by that time, the second battery is already charged and ready to use. What we also have is the hot swap feature. So when you, when this battery drains off, you can replace it with the new one without actually resetting or rebooting the entire system. So your work keeps going on. Thank you. Similar, what is the safest distance for a radio radiographer when doing the portable x-ray in the COVID ward? Uh, the safest distance for any imaging is six feet for a, for a reg, you know, at least here <clears throat> um, for um, any radiograph. So we try to maintain that distance as much as possible. The telescoping arm makes that really pretty easy to attain. Um, it isn't, it isn't terribly difficult. Thank you. Nowadays, asymptomatic COVID positive patients are attending radiological procedures. In such circumstances, how do you prevent cross contamination? If we know that they're, po if we know that they're COVID positive patients, then we will, um, perform all of our normal cleaning processes um, with waiting for the room to flip, um, which that's what we call it, the room to flip. Um, if we have like a CT scan or anything like that or any, any other procedures, um, we have to wait the allotted time uh, if we know that they're a COVID positive patient. Um, the challenge is you, 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 you want to treat everybody like they're COVID positive, but you truly can't because if you did, you would do five patients a day, <laughs> it'd be, it would honestly be really tough. Um, so we, we do the best we can and we do, we do isolate those patients. So if they come to our front desk um, and we know that they're either suspected COVID or they are COVID positive, they, are, they don't stop at our front desk. They are immediately brought back and we put them in a, in a room that we isolate them, get their exams done and get them out of the uh, department as quickly as possible. Thank you. What is the battery life for one battery in the DRX revolution? So the battery life basically will depend on a couple of things. One is how much of a distance are you traveling? Second is how many exposures you are taking. So typically we would say we can do about 150 exposures. Thank you. And then Furthermore, what are the advantages of CareStream's DRX revolution over other modalities? So I, I will highlight a couple of points, and I think Bill and Emma did talk about it. One is the high frequency generator. So when we have the high frequency generator, we are talking about a reduced dosage which is coming in to the patient and to the radiographer as such and the imaging being done pretty quickly. So the exposure time is pretty less. What also happens with the revolution is the imaging, you get the images within a flash of seconds, within a couple of seconds, you are just next to the patient. 
you get to view the images, you can use it, use your time more on the diagnosis of the patient and see those images then and there. And of course you have like the Emma said, the trauma mode, you have the other software options like the pneumothorax and the other smart grid software, which helps you in optimizing the image quality to make a better diagnosis for the patient. Yeah, Emma, can you repeat the question for me, please? So the question was, what are the benefits of the DRX revolution over other modalities? Yeah, I, I think um, you know other over other portable systems that I've been that I've been involved with, and have seen. I think it's it is the maneuver maneuverability, and to Edwin's point, the the speed at which the images are obtained and displayed for you, um, that that cuts down the image time, the patient in the room time, um, the patient discomfort time, and those that is a huge patient satisfier. Thank you. <clears throat> if our regular x-ray machine is not working, can we use this product to take x-rays by placing the patient on the x-ray table? And can we place the detector in the bucky? And how can we reduce the grid lines if the bucky is not working? Oh. <laughs> we do use it in that manner. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that we have an issue with grid lines. I, I'm sure we, I think we can, we can remove the grid out of the table. So that is how we would do that. Um, but I, I know that we have used it in a room when, when it's went down before and I've never heard a, that being a concern because they remove the bucky. I mean, remove the uh, grid. Would someone be able to talk about the use of AI, artificial intelligence in the DRX revolution? Okay, I can take that one. So we do have um, some AI features integrated within the system. Um, so we have a, test, a tech assist chess QA for contrast to noise ratio, so CNR. And it actually notifies the user when the CNR on the acquired images is outside of the preset target range. We also have an anatomy clipping software, which uses artificial intelligence to outline areas of the chest anatomy that might have been collimated off the image. And we also have a chest image autocorrect, which saves time with software that applies AI to automatically display the chest images in the proper orientation. And there Thanks. will be more future coming as well. Great, thank you. Um, another popular question is if you guys could go into further detail on the power consumption of the DRX revolution. So it is battery operated, so um, you'll be using it um, without it being plugged in, so it won't be having any of the power supply. But if you want to fully charge the system, it takes less than four hours. Um, Emma, if you could further expand on it, one of the questions is, does this unit only work on batteries or can it be operated on AC mode as well? Yes, you can use it on um, either. Thank you. Bill, do you ever find you use it? Um, you, how do you find the battery life? Do you find it's pretty, um, it lasts quite a long time enough to do your wards mm -hmm. and get back? Yeah, we don't, we don't really have too many issues with the, with the portable itself um, from a battery life perspective, there's a great indicator on the, you know, on the front of it that tells us where we're at and the staff know how much time they have. Um, they don't keep it plugged in all the time because that's another thing I think is, you know, sometimes keeping things plugged in and it may not be this way, but at home, this is how I do it. So this is what we do here, I guess. Um, you know, we don't keep things that are battery operated that, that you charge plugged in all the time because then that has a tendency to de degrade the batteries. So um, we, they just charge it whenever it needs to be charged. And I don't know that we've ever had any issues with it from that perspective. I will actually add to that point that you can leave the system plugged in and it won't damage the battery life. So if you did want to leave it on charge, you can. 
thank you. And there's a few more questions on battery. Um, and I think the question is more so, um, how long do the batteries last over a lifetime? Will they ever need to be replaced or do they last um, for the, the length of time of the DRX evolution? Well, the battery basically it depends on how well we use it. So as long as we are continuously charging and recharging, the battery life is extended. If at all it is not recharged, that's when the issue is. But if this is used on a regular basis and charged and recharged as in how we use it on the patients for the exposures, this will last typically about five to seven years time. Perfect, thank you. Can the DRX revolution handle multiple detectors of different sizes, maybe even simultaneously? Yeah, like we said, with the DRX revolution, we have the three detector options. We have the 1417, the larger format, the 1717, and very soon we'll be coming with the 2530C detector. So all three sizes are available. And you can use the detectors across the rooms as well. So if you did have a DRX revolution with three detectors and you needed an additional detector for your X-ray room, you can actually take one from the cart. And if you're using a Castrium X-ray room, it works across all of our portfolio. And we use it in that way, Emma. That's, that's, we use them across all of our platforms, all of our rooms. A lot of flexibility. Great, that's awesome. What are, or what can be the possible artifacts that appear on the image if external conditions are optimum? Well, artifacts are not very clear on the question. If uh, either of you can understand Emma or uh, Edwin possible artifacts can appear on the image. Potentially. Sorry, could you repeat the question, Melody, please? Of course. What are the possible artifacts that can appear on the image if external conditions are optimum? So Emma, I think what they are talking about is when you take an exposure, will there be any image artifacts or something that is not that is outside the image. I think when we are looking at it, when it's a 32 kilowatt generator, we are talking about a 400 MA machine that is there. The image artifacts will not be there. It's as good as a standalone X-ray unit or a fixed room X-ray unit. Thank you. Does the DRX revolution support wireless printing? Well, the DRX solution is uh, with the wireless detector. The DRX solution does have the wireless capability. Unfortunately, the printer today it does not have the wireless capability. So basically, the images will either be printed through the LAN network or we could send it to the PACS and print it out. Yeah, Edwin, that's our process too. We send it to PACS and print it from PACS because the printers are all hardwired via Ethernet. They're not wireless. Will, um, does the DRX Evolution work with image suite software? So the DRX Evolution comes with our brand new software, which is Image View. Um, so it's not available with Image Suite at this time. Um, but Image View um, has a lot of features such as the Window 10, cyber security, um, and a brand new user interface. So it's very easy for the radiographer to use. Thank you. Is there a workstation that goes along with the x-ray machine? So typically in India, what we do is we, if the workstation is required, we do provide it, but from the revolution itself, you could process the images. If you have a hardwired LAN cable, you could also print it. But if a radiologist or the consulting physician wants to, we can provide the workstation software also. Is
is there any QA or QC test before radiography to check the quality of the machine? So we, we go ahead, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as we um, yeah we touched on earlier, we have the the daily daily dark. Um, calibration which can be done on the detectors that was also a total quality tool that can be done by service or the radiographers um, depending on the workflow. Is there anything to add from you Bill? No I, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <For the most part. laughs> All right this is a bit of a long question so I'll try to read it slowly. Usually due to regular use the PSP screen gets damaged due to friction in the reader, and artifacts are found on the images which affect the quality. Are there PSP screens available to replace? So Emma, maybe I'll try to answer this question. What I believe uh, PSP stands for is the phosphorus steamer label plates, which we generally use it in the CR systems so when you are using it with the CR yes there are the PSP screens which are there in this in the CR cassettes but when you look at the revolution it's more of a digital environment where you have the detector out over there no screens nothing at all the moment you capture the image you get the moment you do the exposure you get the image on your monitor in less than three to five seconds thank you can we pre-register the credentials of patients who we're going to do an x-ray on? So how it works for at our facility is our radiology information system or RIS is attached to the portable electronically and wirelessly. Um, and when a patient is ordered for a chest x-ray, it appears on the work list. So it's there when the technologists take it to before they leave the department and when they get up to the um, ICU or wherever they're going for the portable, they select that patient has all the demographics. Um, it has their medical record number, all of that information. So when we send it back to PACS, it's tied into the order in PACS. And so the images all register there. It's very quick and seamless. Great. What is the maximum KV? P we can use. So the KVP settings available are from 40 KVP to 150 KVP. That's the maximum available, like any stationary unit. Thank you, and um, due to time, this will be our last questions, um, but I do recommend to all of our attendees to reach out. Um, the contact information is right on the screen if you would like to have further questions or to speak with any of our amazing experts. What elements are used in anode and the cathode constructions? So that's a good one for you, Edwin, or maybe refer to the, um, the R&D. Well, I can only say is maybe we'll get back to you on this question because this is uh, pure technical and maybe the R&D team can help us out to respond, but we we'll definitely get back to you all with the response. Okay, we'll sneak one more in then. <laughs> is it possible to query the packs from the DRX mobile to see previous images? Yes. <laughs> it's a two-way interface which is nice so you can query and pull patients um, to look at their last images it also has uh, the functionality at least for us that um, with the with the volumes um, it retains the images on the portable for us you know it's a watermarked mar watermarked period of time so if they've had a portable within the last x number of days uh, image on that on the portable it will be on there and you can see it so you can go back and look at um, the settings that the staff used um, for doing that exposure so you can make the same exposure if at all possible all right thank you and now we're ready for any closing comments yes uh, 
Well, thanks. Thanks for the amazing attention by everyone who's there as a part of our guest list. And I can see a lot of questions still unanswered. So, you know, uh, as Melody mentioned, do we have obviously recorded what we have not answered, but if you do have any more, then please feel free to connect on the contact information given. A uh, lot of you might want to see the actual product in operation or see, you know, uh, where is it around? How does it work? So uh, just to let you know, we have quite a bit of uh, installations in India already. Uh, we have uh, what close to 13 in some of the main, 11, sorry, in some of the main public institution in the country, five in some of the leading corporate hospitals in this country. And you can connect with your case stream contact in your given location to really understand how does it actually function. Uh, it's been an amazing evening for all of us to have this uh, session webinar uh, on Imaging on the Move and on behalf of everyone from KStream and everyone uh, who's been a part of making this happen. Uh, let me thank you, Bill, for your kind attention and uh, a lot of uh, interest in giving the audience in India and the cluster such uh, amazing insights from your particular experience. Uh, I, I think all of us would greatly benefit from the same. Thank you very much. I, I was very glad to be part of it. Thank you. And I'll also like to take this opportunity to, to thank all our managers uh, who are a part of this call, our regional general managers, uh, Ron Thomas, uh, Balakrishna, Ed, and uh, Neeraj, along with their wonderful teams who have enabled all the amazing guests who have come in today, uh, along with Chandan, uh, who takes care of our neighboring uh, countries. So with that, uh, Melody, uh, we are through. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all of us and uh, to all the guests and you can please drop in your questions on the given email address and we'll come back to you. Thank you.